there's mimicry at the level of form, there's mimicry at the level of process, but there's also mimicry at the level of ecosystem. There's a whole field uh, in economics where economics meets ecology, which is called industrial ecology. And it's looking at our industries and saying, how could we make them work more like a forest? In the sense that in a forest, you've got all your organisms juggling resources with, and with one another. There's a handoff of material resources constantly. There's all this energy coming in, and then they juggle the materials that they have through a food web. And so the idea in industrial ecology is how do you co-locate industries so that one industry's waste is another industry's raw material. And there are already, this is a picture, a map of a coral reef and all the organisms in a coral reef and how they share resources. And there are several eco, they're called eco-industrial parks around the world that have started to do this. And I, and I put this in here to, to encourage you not only to look for upgrade paths for the companies that you're investing in so that they become greener and cleaner over time, but maybe even at the level of economy that you invest in portfolios of companies that can share each other's quote unquote waste. I mean, waste is just unwanted or undesigned material. If you actually design that quote unquote waste to be a raw material for another company that's in your portfolio, um, that's when you begin to knit together this industrial ecology or food web. Have you guys seen this picture of the, uh, the globe? the two globes there. Has anybody seen that? It's in Europe these days, nobody sees it. This is a beautiful, incredible picture. That, that small, on the, on the left, that small blue bubble is all the water, including salt water, fresh water, sea ice, all water on Earth, the volume of all water on Earth as compared to the volume of the Earth. And on the right is all the atmosphere that we can breathe compared to the volume of the Earth. When you think about what's worth investing in, <laughs> you guys are doing it. You're investing in the technologies to keep those bubbles sweet enough to support life. And when you think about it, you're on a long line of organisms who have done that. You know, because what, what organisms do, in addition to meeting their own needs, is they have to figure out how continuity of life, how to take care of their offspring. And the way they do that is, you know, they don't think about their offspring as just the offspring that's here. From a biological standpoint, you're thinking about, can my genes be here 10,000 generations from now? So how do you take care of an organism an offspring 10,000 years from now. So the only way you can do it is to take care of the place that's going to take care of the offspring. So that's why success in the natural world are technologies that not only meet that their, their needs and the needs of their immediate offspring, but they actually sweeten the habitat. They actually create conditions conducive to life. So all the technologies in aggregate, all the natural technologies on Earth, basically took a very nasty planet. You know, the, the planet before life was pretty nasty. It was not inhabitable at all. And life sweetened it and created the water, cleaned the water, built the soil, cleaned the air, and still does to this day. You know, it's life creating conditions conducive to life. That's what we're trying to figure out what to do now with our technologies, not just to get the last, squeeze out the last watt, but actually create it with a technology that creates conditions conducive to life in all aspects. Clean tech, second wave, third wave, fourth wave. So biomimicry, to me as a biologist, I never imagined that I would be working in a, with Paul Hawken in a, in a business accelerator and development company commercializing technologies. Um, and yet, it's the, it's the most amazing thing because 
when I give talks like this to people and then I say, do you see the reason why we should probably conserve biodiversity? <laughs> Everybody gets it in a way that they've never, ever, ever gotten it before. Um, biomimicry is this new way of viewing and valuing biodiversity. And there's something else that we're doing. We're doing it at Biomimicry Ventures Group, but we're, we're, we're excited about it. It's a way of tying conservation dollars with innovation. And what it is, is a, it's a royalties for habitat program. We're encouraging the companies we work with, if they come up with a bio-inspired idea, that they donate a percentage of their proceeds to conserve the habitat of the organism that inspired it. Um, and and this, is a, this is a big new, I think, um, uh, flow of conservation money um, that's tied to, to us basically being able to say thank you. The original patent holder is the organism. And it's a way of giving back to that organism in a very meaningful way to protect the wellsprings of the next great ideas. So that's, that's an exciting thing that we're working on at the Institute. Um, the other thing that Sue's mentioned is this, um, if, you wanna, if, if, if you want to, at this point, if you have companies in your portfolio and you want to get them on this upgrade path of becoming greener and greener and greener over time, um, asknature.org is a source for designers and engineers. It's, it's an innovation tool box, a Google of nature's solutions, but it's organized by design and engineering function. So you can type in desalination and up will come mangroves and kidneys and, and there's inspiration for um, bio-inspired innovation. So this is what I would ask you to do. Um, every single time that you have a challenge, um, go outside, number one, um, and you will find a portfolio of technologies that will best anything, believe me, anything that this, even this big-brained ape has come up with at this point. Um, and think about your set of, port of, of technologies as a reimagination of our entire species method of meeting our needs. Because really that's what clean tech at its, at its um, um, the end of this arc that we're on right now is creating a set of technologies that allow us to live on this earth elegantly and as a welcome species. I really honor what it is that you do and as agents of natural selection, I welcome you great, good, and wise decision-making. Thank you. <laughs>